So let me write the date on here for, I can't believe it's April, y'all. It is April 2nd. I feel like that's a joke in and of itself, that it's April already. We're going to start talking about what a mole is. So this chapter is called the mole concept. We're going to talk about a dude whose last name is Avogadro. Uh, when is all the homework due? So um, for this, so today is Thursday. I'm going to have your homework due on Monday, and I will pull the class at the end of the class to see if you guys want like an hour of office hours on Monday. So you can give it a shot over the weekend. And if you're still like big question mark, then you can ask some questions on Monday. So it'll be due before midnight, or by 11.59 on Monday. Um, if you're talking about Alex's homework, that's due like mid-finals week, like May 6th or something like that. Okay. So, Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is really, really big. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's just a way of counting things. It could be atoms. It could be molecules. It's kind of like how you know that there's four quarters and a dollar. Avogadro's number, there's Avogadro's number, atoms or molecules in one mole. And we're going to talk about a mole in a second. So if we had a sample of carbon and it weighed 12.01 grams, it would contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. And by the end of this lecture, you'll be able to kind of do full circle and understand what that statement means. So at the end of this, come back to this first slide and try to make sense of this statement about a sample of carbon. If that makes sense to you, then chapter eight makes sense to you. So the mole is what we're going to be using for chapters 8 and 9 and some in chapter 10. And a mole is just a unit of measure for a, an amount of a chemical substance. A mole has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So again, those particles could be atoms, could be molecules of something. So an example of atoms, maybe it's sodium atoms, or if it's a molecule, maybe it's some kind of hydrocarbon, okay? It's just a unit of measure for an amount of some kind of chemical substance. One mole is equal to Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. This is going to be one of our unit equations. So one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd unit. That's a unit equation. How do we use that unit equation? Well, we use it in calculations where we're trying to go from number of things like atoms To moles or moles to number of things. So in this case, in this example, how many sodium atoms are in 0 0.240 moles of sodium? We're going from moles to number of things. One mole which MOL is the abbreviation for mole or moles. So don't think molecules, think moles. One mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. In this case, we're talking about atoms. So that's what we're gonna say here. This is our unit equation. Now we need to make a unit factor. We're trying to go from moles of something to atoms of something. 
Moles is what we have. Atoms is what we want. So we're going to put what we want where we want it. What we want is atoms, and we want that to be at the top. That's our numerator, okay? Remember your numerator and denominator from when you learn fractions. At the bottom, we're going to put moles. That's the denominator. What we want needs to be on top in this case. So remember, what we want over what we have. And what we want, we want to be at the top. So now let's fill in some numbers for this unit factor. For atoms, we're going to look at our unit equation. The number associated with atoms is 6.023. So that's going to go here at the top, and I'll write it in red, too. We're talking about sodium atoms. At the bottom, we want moles. And from our unit equation, we're saying one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So one mole should go in the bottom. And the problem specifically is talking about sodium. So that's our unit factor. What you have to do is take your initial or your given value, which was 2.40 moles of sodium, and multiply by your unit factor. In this case, you're going to take 0 0.240 and multiply by 6.023, which this 3 is kind of sad, times 10 to the 23rd. Try that in your calculator, because you're going to have to remember how to do exponents in your calculator. We haven't done that in a while. Try it in your calculator, and then you can type in the chat box what you get. Or if you're like, mm, I don't remember how to do this in my calculator, that's all right. We'll go over it. When you get an answer, you can put it in the chat box. You did do it right, yeah. That's exactly what I got. Yes, this will be on YouTube, Kennedy. Oh. Kennedy, this will be on YouTube. So if you lose connection, it's all right. So I got... 1.44 times 10 to the 23rd sodium atoms. Sure. So when you're putting, do you need to know how you put it in the calculator or where the numbers come from again? Okay. So when you're putting it, okay. So when you're putting it into your calculator, what you need to remember is for the exponent, what you're looking for is usually something that's called an EE button. And normally you have to push second function and then the EE button. So I can put up a, a picture. Um, I can take, there's a slide from chapter two, I believe, when we were first doing this that's on Blackboard. I'll snag that out and I'll put that in with chapter eight as a reminder so that you remember how to use your calculator. But that's how you put in the, um, the exponents. So all you're doing is taking 0 0.24 times 6.023, then do second function in EE, and then you put in 23. Hit enter or equals, 
and then you should get 1.44 times 10 to the 23rd sodium atom. So don't forget to put that times 10 to the 23rd, or else it's wrong. 1.44, very different from 1.44 times 10 to the 23rd. When we do our unit analysis for what units we should have, the moles cancel. So you're left with sodium atoms. We're going to do another one of these. Yes. So one mole is always equal to 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd, always and forever. So we're going to do another example where this time we have magnesium atoms and we have 1.59 moles of magnesium. Again, notice how when I read the question, the first thing I do is rephrase it so that I know what I'm doing. In this case, we're taking moles of magnesium and we want to know how many atoms do we have. So that's our question. Our unit equation, we know one mole of magnesium is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That will never change. Doesn't matter what element it is. It could be carbon dioxide, it could be some kind of molecule. One mole of that molecule or atom is always going to equal 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. So there's our unit equation. Now for our unit factor. Since we're trying to get atoms at the end, should I put number of atoms in the top of my unit factor or the bottom? You can write it in the chat. You can put top or bottom for where the atoms go. And we have a couple people saying bottom. You have any other people voting? Top or bottom? For where the atoms go. Y'all need to exercise your vote. Exercise your right to vote. All right, so we're saying bottom. No, nah, it's the top. So what we want is atoms at the end. So <laughs> don't give me the why. So it goes at the top because when we do the multiplication, we want moles to cancel out. So we put atoms in the top and moles in the bottom. Because when we multiply by our moles, it'll cancel. We want to be left with atoms. So we have to fill in our numbers. and then we multiply. So when you're going from moles to atoms, you need number of atoms at the top, which is Avogadro's number at the top, and moles at the bottom. So just, if you need to make a cheat sheet for how to solve these, that's what I would do. Because you need to learn how to recognize the types of problems that we're doing for this type of question, so let me give you specifically what you should put on your cheat sheet, okay? If you're going from moles to number of things,
your unit factor should have Avogadro's number at the top. and one mole on the bottom. So this is our first problem type, converting number of moles to number of things. If we were to go in the reverse direction, number of things to number of moles, you would flip the unit factor, and I'll show you that in a minute. For right now, Try putting into your calculator the 1.59 moles of magnesium times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And make sure you can do that. And Sarah, you beat me. Yes, that's, that is what I got. So make sure that when you do when you do this, one, we have to remember six figs again. That seven is sad. Okay. So 9.57, I'm going to try writing that again. My pen just had all kinds of ideas of its own. There we go. 9.57 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. We're not going to be too big of a stickler on the sig figs right now. I want you to understand how to do it first. And then if you give me eight numbers after the decimal point, I don't really care about that as long as it's the right number. So the 6.02, that's an exact number. What changes the number of sig figs is the given information. So the 1.59 moles of magnesium is what tells you how many sig figs there are. And in this case, there are three. Good, okay. So that's the first problem type. We have atoms, we have moles, and we're trying to figure out how many atoms we have or number of things, it could be atoms, it could be molecules. So for your cheat sheet, that is what you should put down. The problem type, we're going from moles to number of things. Your unit factor should be Avogadro's number at the top and one mole on the bottom. Are we good to move on? If so, raise your hand. Okay. Cool. You can lower your hand. So now we're going to go in the reverse, just like I promised. How many moles of aluminum are in 3.42 times 10 to the 21st atoms of aluminum? So this time we have atoms, and we're trying to go to moles. Whenever you see atoms or um, molecules, that means we're talking about number of things, which always means Avogadro's number. Okay, so this question, we are going from the number of atoms of aluminum to the number of moles of aluminum. Whenever you see atoms or molecules, that means that we're talking about number of things, which always implies that you're going to be using Avogadro's number. He's a popular guy, all right? So in this case, we still have the same unit equation. One mole of aluminum is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. But this time, our unit factor is going to be different. 
because we want number of moles at the top because that's what we want our units to be at the end. So we're going to put the number of moles at the top and the number of atoms on the bottom. So when I fill in the numbers, where am I putting the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd? Should that number be at the top for moles or at the bottom for atoms? We have some people saying top. Any other guesses? Jaquan's got it. Bottom. <laughs> so you give me that same why. So the reason is the problem is different. Now we're going from atoms to moles. And what we want needs to be on top so that when we multiply through, it will cancel. So you, Oceana, you are going to need that cheat sheet, okay? What we want at the end of this problem is moles. So we're going to fill in moles at the top. We're going to fill in Avogadro's number at the bottom. And the reason is, if we take the number of atoms we have and divide it by Avogadro's number, yes, I'll do that in just a second. If you take the number of atoms we have and divide it by the number of atoms in Avogadro's number, that tells us how many moles we have because it's a fraction of how much Avogadro's number is. When you're looking at the problem, Oceana, now we're saying how many moles of aluminum are in 3.42 times 10 to the 21st atoms. So notice that the number, the given information, is number of atoms. In the other problems that we did, we had the number of moles. And the question was how many atoms? This time, we have how many atoms, and the question is how many moles. So you may need to, um, that's why I rewrite it like this. This is my plan. I have atoms. How many moles do I have? So if we're going to finish this problem, we need to do some multiplication. So we've got 3.42 times 10 to the 21st atoms. And we're going to multiply through by our unit factor. So we say multiply, but what it really is is you're multiplying 3.42 times 10 to the 21 times 1 and dividing by Avogadro's number because it's in the bottom. So you multiply by 1, divide by what's in the bottom. Put that into your calculator and see what you get. And Sarah's just waiting at the ready. She's like, I've got my hands. My brain is connected to my calculator. Sarah don't even need to use her fingers to use her calculator. <laughs> I'm going to give somebody else a chance to, to, 
to put it in their calculator and see what they get before I reveal the answer. Did anybody else get what Sarah got? Well, Sarah's right, <laughs> but you got so you got five point six eight, so you're off by a factor of a thousand. So that might be a calculator problem. Okay. So the other way that you can reason it out, Keyshawn, is we have 3.42 times 10 to the 21 atoms. One mole, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 10 to the 23rd is bigger than 10 to the 21. So you're going to have a number that's smaller than one. Let's try another problem. So this one, this one, we're doing 10. How many moles of 10 are in 1.25 times 10 to the 21st atoms of 10? Try to set up the problem on your own. I'll give you maybe a minute to do that, and then I'll write it out, and then we'll see what happens. So this is just like the problem we just did, where we're going from number of atoms to number of moles. Yes, please do. Sarah's like, look, ain't nobody going to take this from me. That's right. Yep, that's what I got. Sarah, you can share your answer. And I'll start writing it, writing it out. Y'all help each other out in the chat. I'm going to write out. Um, see, y'all got me all. Let's clear that. So I'm thinking it might be a calculator issue for some of you. 
And if you don't remember how to do scientific notation in your, um, in your calculator, then we'll just need to review that. All right, so notice that the question is about moles. How many moles do we have? That means the moles is going to go in the top. What we have is the number of atoms. That's going to go in the bottom, okay? So then you do your multiplication. This is what I like about y'all. Y'all help each other out. Y'all are talkative. It's great. So if we were to go to write this in scientific notation, it would be 2.07 times 10 to the minus third moles. Don't worry about that right now. We're going to review scientific notation um, next class. Right now, I just want you to get the concept. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have a study group or like a group me or something formed, do it. You can also access this classroom whether I'm in it or not. It's open. So if y'all want to meet up and do your homework, you can do that. You can share um, you can share files with each other and everything. So you can use this room if you'd like, or you can make your own. You know, do group me or something like that. Do it because you're going to need to help each other, um, help each other study, help each other with the homework. And for this section, we're going to um, we're going to do a take home exam. So it's going to be all math, and um, yeah. So you gotta you gotta be ready. Don't worry about the scientific notation right now. Let's get the concept of how to do the calculation, how to get to an answer that we write in scientific notation. Okay. So do we need to go over this problem again? Raise your hand if you want me to go through this problem again. And I also didn't give you your cheat sheet, what you should write on your cheat sheet for solving things. Okay. So we want to go over it again. Okay. So let's, let's walk through this again slowly. What we have, we have, how many moles of tin are in 1.25 times 10 to the 21st atoms of tin? So the question is asking, if we have some number of atoms of tin, how many moles do we have? So I rewrite the question.
The next thing you need to do, we're always going to use the same unit equation for these. One mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atom. The unit factor for this is going to have moles on the top and atoms on the bottom. Yes, number of atoms is number of things. So for this problem type, where we're going from number of things to moles, you're going to have your unit factor with moles at the top. and Avogadro's number at the bottom. So if we think about this example as, let's say, I always go to pizza because it's so relatable in terms of slices versus a whole pie. Think about the number of things or the number of atoms, molecules, that's the slices. Yes, we have atoms and we want moles. Think of the number of atoms as the number of slices we have and the number of moles as whole pizzas. If you have five slices of pizza and you want to represent that as how many pizzas do you have, you take five and you divide it by eight because there's eight slices of pizza in a whole pie. If you have 1.25 times 10 to the 21st atoms, that's the slices, you divide by the whole pie and that's Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It may not all sink in at, you know, right, right now. Because it's, if you haven't had this for a while, if you had it in high school but it didn't sink in, or you've never seen this before, you have to practice. So if you still have some question marks at the end of class, that's okay. Let's get through this, go back over your notes, try the problems to see where you're having trouble, and then we can diagnose and fix. So make sure that you add to your cheat sheet for our types of problems, number of things to moles. Your unit factor is going to be one mole over Avogadro's number. So we're going to move on from this. Don't worry. You'll see it all again. We talked about number of moles and Avogadro's number. Yes, Avi, go ahead. Yeah, so um, if you have it in normal mode, then it'll probably give you a decimal. And if you have it in scientific mode, it may give you scientific notation. So there could be the 207, and then sometimes up in the corner somewhere, there might be a, you know, E negative 3 or something like that to show that it's scientific notation. And But for calculator-specific questions, what would be best is if you send me a picture of your calculator, like a good picture, or you tell me exactly what it is and I can find it online and I can tell you how to put in scientific notation. So help each other out and yeah, and if that doesn't work, send me, just tell me what it is or send me a link to it and I can tell, I can help you out. All right. You're welcome. So we talked about moles and number of things. Now we're going to talk about molar mass. So 
So all substances have some kind of a mass. If you take the atomic mass that you get from the periodic table, and you express it as uh, grams per mole, then you have a molar mass. That's the amount, that's the mass of one mole of substance. So if you had one mole of carbon, you could look at the periodic table and you would find 12.01 AMU, that's atomic mass units. You write the 12.01, and instead of AMU, you write grams per mole, and that is your mole of mass. So one mole of carbon weighs 12.01 grams. Two moles of carbon is 24.02 grams. So we're going to use it to figure out the mass of something, of some kind of substance. So we'll have moles, and we try to figure out mass. Before we do that, we need to figure out how to, so you can't always just look at the periodic table. Sometimes you have to do some multiplication or some adding. So in the case of a gas like nitrogen, where nitrogen gas is N2, there are two nitrogen atoms. So this is the number of nitrogen atoms. And this 14.01 is the mass of one mole of nitrogen, which is from the periodic table. Then you would multiply the two times the 14.01 because you have two two atoms of nitrogen, and you would get 28.02 grams per mole of nitrogen gas. Does that make sense? Raise your hand if you're like, mm, say that again. Okay. For molar mass, we need to take into account what atoms we have and how many. In this case, we have nitrogen gas. For the last exam, remember how you had to write how many, you had to think about how many of each atom was on both sides of a chemical equation? Here, we're looking at this molecule, which is N2, we have two atoms of nitrogen. So if we want to figure out the molar mass of nitrogen gas, we have to take the nitrogen mass from the periodic table, which is the 14.01, and multiply it by two because we have two atoms in the molecule. When you do that, you get 28.02. We'll do another example, and hopefully that'll help. So when you're, doing, when you're doing the molar mass of a substance, something, you know, bigger than just like N2 gas, you have to take the sum of all the atomic masses of each element. So what I want you to do to prepare to come up with the molar mass, I want you to write out how many of each atom do you see? So how many copper, how many nitrogens, and how many oxygens are in copper nitrite, this molecule here? So write out how many copper atoms there are, how many nitrogen atoms, how many oxygen atoms. 
Yep, there's one copper. Two nitrogen and four oxygen. Ding, ding, ding. Good girl. So we've got all these different atoms. Now we have to go to the periodic table to figure out the masses of each. So for copper, it's 63.546 grams for one mole of copper. For nitrogen, we just did that. So my periodic table has um, three decimal places. So that's what we're going to go with. It's the same one that I, I use for y'all for exams and stuff. And then oxygen is 15.999 grams. So we have number of atoms. And then we have the atomic mass. of each element. Now we have to string all this stuff together. So our molar mass, which I'll abbreviate as MM, is equal to, we've got one copper atom times 63. Five, four, six grams plus two nitrogen atoms, and they each have a mass of 14.007 grams plus our four oxygens times the mass we got from the periodic table, 15.999 grams. So you do all that, you multiply and add everything up. Give that a shot in your calculator and tell me what you get. Yeah, it's definitely something with your calculator, with the mode. Yeah, it's 155, we'll say 0.6, but it, it's something about your calculator, Keyshawn, because you're, you're getting, like, the right numbers. So it looks like your calculator is trying to tell you scientific notation. So, yeah, Avi, that's what I got. So since all of these have um, three digits after the decimal point, yes, this is on Alex. <laughs> yeah, so it must be something with your calculator because that so if it were represented in scientific notation, then it would be like 1.55 times 10 to the second. Okay, good. So you're going to have to go back and refresh those um, rules for adding and subtracting, and multiplying and dividing with sig fig. So this, in this case, we have, um, when we're adding, we care about the number of digits that we have behind the decimal. Oh, so for the test, um, 
So, Sarah, let's talk about that for you um, right after class, if you don't mind. All right. So that's how we do molar mass. How many people are like, mm, that's kind of a question mark, because I have another example for us to do. So if you need me to walk through it again, I can, or we can do another example, and I'll let y'all loose on it. All right, let's get into it. What is the molar mass of magnesium sulfate? So what I would recommend you do is make your little table like we did before, where you write out each of the elements that you see in the compound and how many atoms of each element are present. And then you have what the, um, what the periodic table says for the mass then you can write out your, um, you know, what you're actually going to be multiplying and adding together. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Uh, in one of my other classes, it was funny. They're like, does she freeze for any of y'all? I was like, no, I'm just giving you time to do the problem. But, you know, you want some elevator music, I'll hum something for you. <laughs> so I'm here. I didn't freeze. I'm just giving you time to work out the problem. So I'll give you two minutes. So that'll be like noon. Give it a shot. Like I will sing the wheels on the bus because that's what we bang in this house. Wheels on the bus. We do lots of old McDonald's. I will get into the nursery rhymes and make it soulful. Don't even. <laughs> I miss y'all so much. Okay, do a problem. Making me all sentimental and stuff. I'm going to start writing out that chart. I was just about to ask for somebody to give me an answer. And Cameron, you got it. So I'll write out. <laughs> Don't be mad because he's on it. 
up your game. If somebody was not in class and they're watching this video, it's going to seem crazy because they're not going to see the chat. They're going to be like, who is she talking to? So in this case, no. For sig figs, there are three, um, at least, so it depends on the periodic table that you use, okay? If we're doing strict sig figs, like they do on Alex, you would have to have three decimal places because each of these masses from the periodic table have three decimal places. If you were doing this as part of a problem, I'm not going to hold you. That would be right in my book. But just keep in mind, when you're doing Alex homework, they're expecting you to stick to the rules for adding and subtracting, dividing and multiplying sig figs. So it seems like we got that. Now we're going to take two concepts and put them together. So we talked about Avogadro's number. Yes, so it's something grams per mole. That's molar mass. But now that we have, uh, we know how to calculate molar mass, we can use it in our calculations. So we know Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. You can think of it as number of things, atoms, molecules. And we said that Avogadro's number of things, we'll say atoms, is equal to one mole. What we also said is that the molar mass of a substance is also equal to one mole. So this is the mass of one mole of substance. That means that we can take, say, the number of atoms convert it to the number of moles, and then figure out the mass. Whoa, my pen just went crazy right there. And remember the mass is in grams. So we're building. With chapter eight, we're building our skills. So if you don't understand how to do the first set of calculations we did, then building on it is going to be struggle bus. So you may not 100% get it during class time, but make sure that you take the time to go over it. This part of the class, if math is a struggle for you and understanding the concepts, yeah, I think you can have it by Tuesday. So the homework is going to be due by 11.59 on Monday, and I'll have um, office hours. I'll probably do one to two on Monday. So you can drop into that or you can shoot me an email over the weekend. But I want you to really try it on your own first. So let's do an example of this. Oh, you're welcome. So we have a mass, or we don't have a mass. What is the mass of 1.33 moles of titanium, which is Ti on the, um, on the periodic table? So what we have is moles. Where we need to go is mass. We cannot jump straight from moles to mass. 
we have to figure out the molar mass first. We said the molar mass of just one thing like titanium, that's just one element, one atom. You can look at the periodic table and represent that as grams per mole, and that is your molar mass. So for titanium, the molar mass is simply equal to 47.8 six, seven grams per mole. Does everybody understand that? So you look at the periodic table for titanium and the number that's there, the decimal, 47.867, you write that number grams per mole. That's your molar mass. Now we're ready to use our molar mass to go from moles to mass, which in this case is grams. We can write this molar mass a little bit differently. We can write it as a unit as a unit factor. So molar mass as a unit factor. Yes, the molar mass of titanium. You just look at the periodic table and write out the the AMUs that it says, forty seven point eight six seven and write grams per mole. We can write molar mass as a unit factor. 47.867 grams of titanium is the mass of one mole of titanium. So that's a unit factor. And this is what we can use to go from moles to mass. You take your 1.33 moles and multiply by your, your unit factor. When you do that, you're going to cancel out the mole. Oh, you can't hear? I don't know what to do about that. Okay. Are we still good? Okay. So you take your mole. You multiply by 47.867 grams, and you divide by one mole. So try that math in your calculator and see what you get. Yes. So you should get, your calculator is going to tell you 63.6631 grams. That's a lot of digits. So in this case, we go back to the problem. Our given information has three sig figs. So we should report three. So it should be 63.7 grams. So let's try another one. Because I know we're getting close to time here. Uh-oh, she said, wait. Well, if I go back, all of that's going to be gone. <laughs> if 
but I can tell you what to put on your cheat sheet. So to go from moles to mass, you need to one, calculate your molar mass, and then two, use your unit factor with grams on the top and one mole on the bottom. So the number of grams is what you calculated. So that's what you calculated in step one. So that should be on your cheat sheet. Moles to mass, calculate your molar mass. Your unit factor should have the number of grams, which you calculated, over one mole. You use that to multiply by your moles, and you get grams. Now we have atoms to mass. We cannot just jump from atoms to mass. We actually have to go from atoms to moles to mass. Whoa, let's just clear that because that's just weird. Okay. So our problem gives us atoms, we need to get to mass. You have to go through moles first. So this is going to be another problem type. I'll go through and solve it for you and then I'll give you what you should put on your cheat sheet. This time, we're gonna have two, um, two different unit factors. So pay attention to this one. This is gonna be the last thing we do for class. And we'll pick this up. Um, we'll pick this up on Tuesday. So to go from atoms to moles, we have to use Avogadro's number. Then, once we have mole, we can get to mass using our molar mass. So if you think about it, we're just doing two smaller problems to get to the answer. We already know how to do the atoms to moles. So we'll take our number of atoms, and if you use your cheat sheet, you'll know that our unit factor has to have one mole at the top and Avogadro's number at the bottom. and that will give us the number of moles. But we're not done. We need to go from moles to mass. For the molar mass, we're just talking about lead, so you can look at the periodic table and see that your molar mass is just equal to the number that's on there. So that's 207.2 grams per mole. So you take that number of moles that you get and you multiply 
by your unit factor. So try to fill in those numbers. Get the number of moles, don't round it, and just multiply by the molar mass and see what you get. Somebody's sharing their audio right now. I'm hearing all your family life. <laughs> That's fine, you can go ahead and ask. So what that means is how many grams of lead do you have if you have 2.55 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lead? Yes, it's a two-step problem. So for the number of moles, See, that's your calculator, man, because that's the right. So it's not 800 something. So for the number of moles, it should be 0.42358. We'll, we'll do that. And then you take that number of moles. and multiply by your molar mass, and you should get 87.8. We'll start with this on next class, because this is a little bit more complex. But overall, what you're trying to do is identify what you're trying to get. So we're, we started with atoms. We need to get to mass. And then you have to figure out how many steps are there between you and getting to the mass. Because you can't jump straight from atoms to mass. But we're over time. It's 1220. I know other people got class and other stuff to do. So you're not going to get one of these problems as homework. Um, we're going to start with this on Tuesday. So you're going to get some of the, the one-step problems, and I'm going to want you to identify the problem type as part of your work because that will help you practice identifying the problem type and pulling the right method for how to solve it. So stay tuned for that. I'll post it um, this afternoon. And um, if you have questions, we can, you can hop in the office hours at 1230. I'm just going to use this room for office hours. Yeah, and help each other out. Make sure you help each other out. So if you don't get it, you need some clarification, we'll do office hours in this room in, a, in like 10 or 15 minutes. So if you don't have any questions for me, that's all I have for you. And I will see you on, well, not really see you, but I will talk with you on Tuesday.